When it comes to implementation, the implementation of webhook is very similar to implementation of a RESTful API. So question is, what is a webhook and how is it a difference compared to a standard REST web API? So webhook can be defined as a mechanism for communication between different software applications or system. It allows one system to send notification or data to another system automatically when a specific event or trigger occurs. Now, when we talk about communication to different software applications or system, that can be done through multiple mechanism. REST is one of the mechanism, SOAP is one mechanism, then socket communication is one mechanism, queuing and WebSocket is also another mechanism. Webhook is yet another mechanism. So let's try to unfold what is the use of Webhook and why would we really need it. And then we'll get into an implementation of Webhook. So Webhook provides a way for system to communicate in a real-time or near real-time manner, which is also the case of, for example, WebSocket, enabling automatic data exchange and event-driven workflow. So this is the fundamentally main difference between a REST API and a webhook, is that webhook is meant for event-driven workflows. Whereas when it comes to REST API, it is just request response model. The webhook eliminates the needs for system to continuously poll or query for update and allows for more efficient and timely data integration and processing. So let's discuss a little bit detail in terms of how it works. So a webhook occurs when an event takes place in the sending system or application. So a sending system or application decides when to call the webhook. It could be an action such as a new user sign up, a file upload, a payment received, or any other predefined event. The sending system is configured to send a payload, which is essentially the data, to a specific URL in the receiving system whenever that event occurs. This URL is often provided by the receiving system, which acts as a webhook endpoint. When the event occurs, the sending system creates a payload containing relevant data and send an HTTP POST request to the specified webhook URL. So here, in terms of the protocol, it is same as any other web protocol. It's an HTTP protocol and we use HTTP POST for the webhook endpoint URL. The payload typically includes information about the event, whatever event that has occurred. The webhook listener then receives the incoming HTTP request at the specified endpoint URL. It processes the payload and performs the necessary action based on the received data. This can involve updating a database, triggering additional process, sending notification, or integrating with other system. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there can be other ways of communicating events, right, or notifications. One of the mechanism is through, let's say, a Kafka stream or a RabbitMQ. But we usually use Kafka stream or RabbitMQ for communication between services inside of a data center or inside of an application. It's really used for two different companies or two different system hosted in two different locations to talk it to each other. This is where webhook really shines, where you define a webhook and let someone which is not inside the periphery of your system call you whenever an event occur on their side. So you can update or keep your system up to date near real time based on the event occurring on the client system or on a vendor system.
That is where webhook becomes really useful. It is important to note that webhooks require both the sending and receiving system to be properly configured and compatible with each other. The receiving system needs to have a webhook endpoint then can receive and process incoming request while the sending system must be capable of generating and sending the webhook request when a specific event occurs. So now that we understand what webhook is, let's create a webhook. And for the webhook, I'm going to use an ASP.NET Core empty application. And as I was telling, some of the use cases for webhook is inter application or inter company communication. Let's say your company uses a CRM product and whenever and the CRM product is a SaaS based CRM product and whenever a client is added to the CRM system, you want to get notified so that you can also update some of your systems and records. For that, you can create a webhook which will be called by the CRM system whenever that event occurred. So now what I can do is here, I can name it as webhook demo and let's create uh, sp.net. Let's use .net 7. Once the project is created, so in the default implementation, what we are going to do is instead of using map cat, just going to use map post and here we'll say web hook and here we'll take the context and then we'll have a simple implementation and here let me make it as an async async context so that we have an asynchronous context object and then here what we can do is we can save our request body is equal to await context dot request and then here we can say read from json async now for the read from json async we need type so i'm just going to create here public record string header and string body that's all and let's change this one also to and i can use just the standard string type and then here i can say i have to give the name for the record so it's like webhook payload and then i can go here and I can say webhook payload. So I got the request body here. And then I can just, for the time being, for this example, I can do console.write line. And I can say header is request body dot header body is request body dot body that's all i'm going to do and then i can just do context dot response dot status code is equal to 200 and then await context dot response dot write async and i can say webhook acknowledged and here let's just use because it can be nullable it's just question mark and that is pretty much it this is our webhook which is ready now here i'm just writing the responses to console but as you can see from here you can take this response and you can process it any way you want so the processing can be writing into a queue writing into a database or doing some updating your internal systems calling other API.
I'm going to run this application and the application is started. It is running at HTTPS port 7103. So I'm going to open Postman and in Postman, I'm going to go to 7103 slash webhook. It's going to be a post, I'm going to be body and I'm going to use JSON. And here I have a header header and then body and here I'll say hello webhook that is my implementation and then I'm going to send and I got webhook acknowledged a 200 back and if I go to my console I can see header is header body is hello webhook as expected so this is a very simple implementation of webhook now once you have the webhook url ready this is the url that you are going to provide to other applications or the producer of notification for webhook and they are going to configure this webhook url into their application and they're going to call it back whenever there is a notification now it is also a good practice to implement authentication in webhook and for the authentication we can have a very simple implementation we can have implementation like jwt or we can have implementation with respect to api key in header so for example if we want to implement the api key based authentication what we can do here and why i'm saying api key based authentication because in most cases the webhook is going to be called from another server application so api key should be a good implementation for that so we can do context dot request dot header dot contain key authorization if it if it does not contain authorization then we'll just response code is equal to status code start for one unauthorized and let me go to the next line and we can just return and otherwise what we can do is we can just copy this line and we'll say our api key is equal to context dot request dot header and this is the key And here we can make a check if API key is not equal to API key, then again, the same thing we can do. Just return a for one. So let's try it out now. Let's run it again. And as you can see, it's a very simple implementation of authorization using API key. Now here it's not going to be hard coded. This data is going to come from some data source for validation, but I'm just hard coding a value. Now if we call it as is, we'll get a 401 unauthorized. So next in the header, we can add authorization and we can have here ABC run, we'll get the same 401 unauthorized. But now if we just put API key here, we are going to get an acknowledgement, webhook acknowledge. So this is a very simple implementation of webhook. You can see this implementation is good enough for most scenarios. Of course, the API key has to come from a data source. And then at this point, instead of console.write, you will be calling your application or your processing pipeline to do rest of the processing. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to cover something more regarding the webhook 
let me know and I'll try to see if I can create a uh, application in my next video where we can create a webhook client which will do some data processing and trigger notification and then the webhook can react and process. If you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video.